Good day folks. So today's video is going to leave the damp shores of England and travel over the pond to the colonies to take a look at a rare American tank destroyer. One that ultimately lost out to its fast arrival but superseded its little brother. This is the story of the GMC T-72. Our story begins back in December 1942 at the Tank Automotive Center in the Fisher Building, Detroit, with a desire to mount a 76mm gun on the M10 hull. Yet this vehicle had itself only just been designed and built earlier that year, following on from previous concepts such as the T-35 GMC. With development beginning in early 1942, the first deliveries of the M10 were made in April 42 under the name 3-inch gun motor carriage M10, which would go on to serve throughout World War II, primarily with the US and British forces, and to a lesser extent the French and Russians, and was still fighting in the Middle East until the late 1950s. The M10 would play an important part in the war, offering the Americans an effective means to easily knock out German tanks at long range, notably so in North Africa, but it was not without its issues. Notably that while it also had the same 3-inch or 76mm gun, serious design flaws were found in the turret itself, which led to some hasty fixes to make it work. The initial problem with the N10 was that the 3-inch gun, M7, was too heavy and out of balance, by some 190,000 inch pounds. This prevented the M10 from being able to rotate its turret on a side slope of just 4 degrees. Fisher, who produced the M10, did try some emergency hotfixes by mounting the .50 Browning and additional track grousers on the back, but this did not remedy do the problem. Later, a series of ballast blocks were added, before finally adding a dedicated triangular ballast block to the back of the turret, weighing some 3,600 pounds, often referred to as the duck bill. The turret as a whole, however, was still compromised. It was left with a very cramped interior, and simple tasks such as laying the target quickly were difficult, and a general low level of ammunition, at least by American standards of 54 rounds, was considered suboptimal. This led to them initiating a new project to fit the 76mm gun into a mount that could work. They did this by taking the drawings of the T-23 medium tank mount and adjusting them accordingly. After this, the drawings of the modified turret and mount for the 76mm gun motor carriage T-72 were completed and delivered to the Ford Motor Company, who made two pilot turrets. These were then shipped back to Fisher and fitted to the M10A1 chassis. Those using the M4A3 hulls rather than the M4A2 hulls found on your stock vanilla M10. These later hulls used four GAA engines and had a more distinctive exhaust baffle. But they were also kept primarily within the US. From here, they were shipped to the Aberdeen Proving Grounds on the 19th of March 1943 and the 20th of April 1943. The results showed that the T-72 was a satisfactory vehicle and had several advantages over the original M10. Notably that as the counterweight was no longer needed and the turret reshaped, a weight saving of £4,350 could be made for about 1.9 tonnes. The problematic placement of transversing handwheels and elevating handwheels had also been fixed. And along with fixing the position of direct sight telescopes and such, the ability to lay on target was improved. The new turret, which remained open topped, had a lot more space inside for the crew to operate as well. And so, being American, they went and stuffed it full of extra ammo anyway, bringing the total up to 94 rounds. But the extra room has many more benefits, particularly on things like crew morale and prevention of accidents. However, as with all good things, there were downsides. The arm of the T-23 turret itself was reduced from 2.5 inches to 1.8 on the side, which is quite a drop, and from 3.5 inches on the front down to 1.5 inches leaving it comparatively lightly armoured against even the original M10's armour. Yet the American tank destroyer doctrine was about speed and agility, not heavy armour and slugging it out. However, despite these promising features, the project was never to be finished, and it would never go for further user evaluations. This can be seen from two aspects. 
Firstly, that the M10 was in production and retooling the entire line would take weeks. But more importantly, a new kid was on the block in the form of the T70, which would be the prototype to the famous M18 Hellcat. And it was suggested that they might as well just use a Hellcat turret on an M10 hull if needed. Although I don't know if that was ever done. In the Hellcat, they had the same caliber gun on a very fast hull, which fitted their doctrine nicely. And in the event of a bigger gun being needed, work was also underway for the M36 Slugger. Thus, the fate of the T-72 was sealed, and no further work would be done. The fate of those two made is unknown, but likely scrapped or later used up on the Rangers. There were, however, two other aspects we'll be covering here. The first was that the T-72 was one of the few American vehicles that was also tested with a recoilless mounted rigid gun during its development, which we touched upon in my last video on the 32-pounder Centurion. This was one way of trying to fix the problem of interior space and weight, by simply strapping the gun to the armoured front, but ultimately it was not adopted. And the second, and I'm sure there's a few ANSTI keyboards being slapped right now, is that I chose to use the words like slugger and wolverine in the studio. Now the first is very easy, as it's most definitely recorded in official documentation, initially being recorded as the T-71 Blackjack, before getting the name General Jackson and the field name Slugger, and this leads us to Wolverine. This is one of the most enigmatic and often attributed to model makers. Yet in official documentation, when they were allocating nicknames, the US lists that while tanks should be named after generals, both past and present, tank destroyers or SPGs should be named after highly lethal animals commensurate with maneuverability fighting characteristics or aggressiveness in tactical use. They list some suggestions, such as wolf, coyote, cougar, etc., but leave the choice open to branch officers to choose a name. Now, Wolverine is not officially listed there, but it falls very much into this category, and may have been done and then forgotten about, for the same reason that other vehicle names, such as King Kong, Hippo, and Black Panther, have also been forgotten through a lack of use and time, I suspect. Anything that's not used frequently slowly dwindles out of memory. Well, guys, I hope you like that bit of random US trivia on a less commonly known vehicle. Always prefer the odd and obscure machines over the common Panther, Tiger, Sherman, Cromwell type of mainstream stuff, which has been done to death. But until next time, toodle pip. <laughs>